Now, as I talked about in a previous video, I was really excited about the news that Goldberg was coming back to the WWE. It had been 12 and a half years since we last saw him on WWE television. You know, better late than never type of deal. I felt the timing was good. The timing was right. And it was a good way to maybe inject a little bit of life into the WWE product. Raw especially, at least in the short term. What does it hurt? You know, you got Brock Lesnar there. You need to produce some type of opponent for him. So you tie in Goldberg, you tie in the video game, and you perhaps bring in some fans from the past that aren't currently watching, at least for the short term. What the hell you got to lose? Why not? Now, with that being said, you know, I also talked about the fact that I wasn't really all that excited about the thought of Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series because in a lot of ways I thought it was a lose-lose type of situation. And I still somewhat maintain that to be true. But as I saw Goldberg come back on Raw Monday, I saw the reception that he got, and I saw him, it just kind of struck me that, <clears throat> you know, maybe Goldberg should beat Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. And hear me out. I've kind of really got three major thoughts as to why it would be a better idea for Goldberg to go over as opposed to Brock Lesnar. Because let's be honest, <clears throat> excuse me, Brock Lesnar going over well, certainly doesn't do anything for Goldberg. And frankly, I don't really believe it does a whole lot for Brock Lesnar. And Brock Lesnar beating Goldberg, you know, it just seems like it would be a gigantic waste of everybody's time for that to happen. But on the flip side, you bring back Goldberg and he beats Brock Lesnar, whether by hook or by crook, clean or not. It, it, you could get three real factors come into play here. Number one, is that Goldberg's back for the first time in over a decade. And frankly, the first time WWE had him in in 2003, 2004, in some ways they tried, but they really, I don't think, ever fully got behind him. There were a lot of politics at play behind the scenes. And I just don't think that WWE ever got Goldberg. I don't know that Goldberg ever got WWE or frankly even really wanted to be in WWE. So it was a less than memorable run. They tried to a degree, but I don't know if they tried as much as they really could have. But now you bring them back. Let's hope you learn from the lessons of Sting. You bring in Sting, and there's excitement there, and there's anticipation there. And then you get to WrestleMania, and it's him, and it's Triple H. And you're like, here's a perfect place for Sting to go over. You establish the dude a little bit. He could put somebody over down the road. But you've got to take care of this character. This guy's coming in with all these years of past accolades. You need to establish him as someone legitimate in the WWE. And he goes out and he loses to Triple H at WrestleMania. And then his next match, what was it, Night of Champions when he wrestled Seth Rollins? And then he hurts his neck, and for all we know, he's retired. He may never wrestle again. And I really felt the WWE undercut the Sting brand by having him lose at WrestleMania. And then on top of that, having him shake hands with Triple H after that? Fuck that shit. So if you sit there and you have Brock Lesnar go over Goldberg, it kind of does the same type of thing. We don't want to sit there and see this guy come into his first match in 12 and a half years and he freaking loses, even if it is to Brock Lesnar. You want to establish that brand. You want to get that guy back over a little bit. You want to reintroduce him to the audience as somebody to take seriously. He can put over Brock Lesnar or somebody else or multiple people over down the road if you so desire. But right here, right now, the best way to build up that Goldberg brand for the next few months, especially if you're going to do stuff with him through WrestleMania, is to have Goldberg go over here. Learn from the mistakes of the past and learn from the good things of the past that you did like in 2002. You did both good and bad. Here you bring back Hogan Hall and Nash, the original three members of the NWO. You have Hogan lose to The Rock at WrestleMania 18, mistake, but by the next month you rectified it and you had him beat Triple H to win the WWF world title. You had to validate Hogan's return. You had to validate and reintroduce that character. Even if it was Hulk Hogan, even everybody knew about it. You had to establish him as somebody to take seriously. And you did, and then down the road, he put other people over, like Undertaker, Jericho, Angle, Brock Lesnar. I mean, for God's sakes, he let Brock Lesnar submit him with a freaking bear hug. A bear hug. A bear hug. 
And that worked. But on the flip side, then when you got Hall and Nash, you basically walk into that freaking glorified two-on-one handicap match at WrestleMania where Austin's stunning them all, and it's just a big bag of bullshit. And the NWO just kind of, yeah, you flipped off Hogan, and that kind of fucked it up. But then you did other dumb crap, and the NWO just never worked in part because then, you know, Scott Hall shit too, but you're trying to get these guys reestablished, you're trying to reintroduce them to the audience, introduce them to the audience, and then they're losing. Why would you take those guys seriously? And now you bring back Goldberg after over a decade. If he loses his first match, why would anybody care at that point? Yeah, it's the problem you have with certain characters like a Bray Wyatt. Part of the reason nobody cares is because the guy never accomplishes anything of any significance or consequence. If he's always going to lose, why would you ever bother getting involved with him? You know, it's a mistake they made with Sting, and I don't want to see them do that with Goldberg. You have got to put him over here. Number two, another important factor here, is you've built up too much of a monster in Brock Lesnar, and so many bad things that come along with that. Nobody's really a threat on the freaking main roster anyway, so having Goldberg come in and beat him, he's as qualified as any fucking buddy at this point in time, because nobody else on the active roster can either. The only guy that Lesnar has lost to since WrestleMania 30 was The Undertaker in a revenge match a year and a half later where he had to sit there and use alternative means for victory. That's it. So you've literally gotten to that point where you haven't built up anybody as a credible challenger to Lesnar and everybody loses to Lesnar. Then Lesnar always wins. Lester becomes very predictable, and the character becomes very stale. And at this point in time, there is absolutely nothing interesting about Shoeplex City and Paul Heyman cutting the same fucking promo he's cut the past three or four years with this asshole by sitting there marching into another pay-per-view match and another dominant suplex, 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 F5, F5 victory for Brock Lesnar. There's nothing fresh, different, exciting about that whatsoever. It's the same fucking boring bullshit. And we know how Brock Lesnar is utilized in the way of being built as the dominant force heading into a pay-per-view and after he wins at the pay-per-view. Imagine the possibilities of what you could do if you could sit there and have Brock Lesnar lose at a fucking pay-per-view for once. And that you get to this point where if they feel like they always have to protect Brock Lesnar this much, then maybe that speaks to just how much Brock Lesnar really truly isn't over. I'm sure there's politics and other bullshit at play, but at the end of the day, if the guy was that big of a star, it wouldn't matter if he fucking lost a match or two. If anything, it would help, because it would create a little element of spontaneity to the product. It would create a little level of interest or intrigue, because you don't know what's going to happen. Is he going to win? Is he going to lose? What's going to happen? At some point in time, if Lesnar always wins, people are going to continue to tune it out. Because nobody's going to fucking care. Because why invest the time if you're ultimately just going to waste everybody's time with the same match, with the same winner, same result every time? You do nothing for Lesnar's character that way. The only chance to get something out of this for Lesnar's character is for Goldberg to win this match. Because you have the versatility of so many different things that could come out of Brock Lesnar losing this match, up to and including, if you want to do a revenge match between the two of them at the Royal Rumble or even WrestleMania 33, so fucking be it. Then Lesnar could go over there. At least you've got some impetus for something different with the character because now the unconquerable beast was at least for one night conquered. And you can approach a story in an entirely different way. You can package and present the character in an entirely different way. And in my opinion, that is so much more interesting than the blasé, same old bullshit that we've gotten the past two plus years out of the Brock Lesnar appearances that we get. And then on top of that, number three, tying into doing something different and something fresh, you have to worry about Brock Lesnar's opponent at WrestleMania 33 because you know he's going to have a featured match there. So this match at Survivor Series with Goldberg is a nice way to introduce a slow simmer, a slow buildup to that match at Mania, whether it's with, with Goldberg, which it probably wouldn't be, or with somebody else, and you would think at this moment it would probably be Shane McMahon. But think about the versatility of possibility that you could have here. You could have Goldberg go over, and it doesn't have to be 100% clean. It doesn't have to be dirty either. But you could get interference from the gong hitting of The Undertaker. 
And you could sit there and plant the seed that maybe Undertaker's coming back one more time for revenge against Brock Lesnar. And all of a sudden you find out later that the puppet master pulling the strings on all this was Shane McMahon because he wants to get back at Brock Lesnar for some other bullshit from the past. Or maybe you just come right out and you have Shane McMahon fucking be the one to interfere and cost him the match. Maybe you have Shane McMahon be the guest referee and something happens along the way where fucking Shane McMahon nut jobs Lesnar and that's how Goldberg goes over with the spear and the jackhammer. Because let's face it, when you get Goldberg, you're getting an entrance, you're getting who's next, spear, jackhammer. You got to fill in the pieces of everything else. So why not get something that potentially could give you months of programming? If you sit there and have Goldberg go over and you have Shane McMahon involved, and that's the direction you seem to want to be going at this point in time, is Shane McMahon versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 33, then this is the perfect moment in time to start this. And furthermore, it creates a little more interest and intrigue and possibilities for that WrestleMania 33 match. Because if you go right into it and you say Shane McMahon versus Brock Lesnar, everybody's going to queef at that fucking match. Mm, Shane McMahon couldn't beat Undertaker. He's going to beat fucking Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania? That's a fair question. Why the fuck would I care about that? But all of a sudden now, Brock Lesnar, the unbeatable beast, just got beat by Goldberg. And now you think about Shane McMahon heading into this match being Shane McMahon and knowing that potentially Goldberg and or Undertaker could get involved. It just opens up a whole different wealth of possibilities. This to me sounds more like how professional wrestling should be. You take one thing and you potentially spin off several different things from it. You could take Goldberg winning here if you so desired, and if he wanted to, and spin this into a Royal Rumble appearance and a featured match at WrestleMania. Goldberg losing is bad on so many different levels. It does little to nothing for Goldberg. Most certainly isn't going to move a lot more Goldberg merchandise. And also, it does nothing for Brock Lesnar's character. Unless we want to talk about revenge from 12 and a half years ago. Everything to me points to at this point in time. If you insist on doing this match and you're going to do this match, then the only way to go is to have Goldberg beat Brock Lesnar. To me, if you have Brock Lesnar beat Goldberg, then it was once again, as so often is the case with any story involving Brock Lesnar, a gigantic waste of fucking time. And now don't just sit there and say, oh, of course you're going to sit there on this Goldberg shit and you're going to be all hopped up and think that he should win. Keep in mind, I thought there was a part of me that says Randy Orton should have been the one to beat Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam because you could have spun many different things and gotten a return match out of that. I also strongly, if you remember, strongly advocated for Dean Ambrose going over Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32, even if that wasn't necessarily the right call because it was going to do so much for the Ambrose character. It gave you a reason to have a return match between the two of them. And frankly, I thought you'd get more out of Lesnar losing at that spot there. So, of course, the fucking company and Lesnar didn't do it there. I hope everybody involved is smart enough to see the big picture here and understand that Lesnar winning is business as usual and the position and spot that you're in right now and the shitty ratings that you're getting and everything else involved indicates that you need to d stop doing BAU business as usual and you need to do something different. You need to shake some shit up. And one way to shake it up and get maximum return out of the Goldberg return and get more return out of Brock Lesnar and his appearances is somehow some way for Goldberg to beat Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. Mock me if you want. Laugh at me if you want. I don't care. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. And deep down, I think, you 